Good morning. I am Kushi Mukhi. I, along with Prakrit, will be your hosts for the day. I would like to welcome our esteemed chief guests, panelists, faculty members, paper presenters, and attendees to the inaugural ceremony of the International Symposium for Aviation Law and Practice. It is with utmost pleasure and honor that I stand before all of our guests today. And to be in the same room as, the, as Honorable Sri Justice Ujjal Bhuyan, Judge of the Supreme Court of India, um, Dr. Birendra Saraf, Advocate General um, of Maharashtra, practitioners in the field of aviation law, and several luminaries in the legal field. It is truly surreal. I would like to introduce our dais for today. We have with us our respected Vice Chancellor of MNLU Mumbai, Professor Dr. Dilip Ukesar, who has been with us during every step of the way. We are also graced with the presence of the Vice Chancellor of GNLU, Professor Dr. S. Shantakumar, who has been instrumental in the organization of today's conference. Professor Sandeepa Bhatt, someone who has played a pivotal role in every collaboration between the Center for Research in Aviation Law and Air and Space Law of MNLU Mumbai, as well as the Center for Aviation and Space Laws NUJS, someone who's been a mentor to our mentor. Uh Today, uh, with almost all the legal luminaries and as well as industry stakeholders present in this room, I think this is the best way to represent the collective effort and the collaborative spirit that all of us have while uh, all of us assemble here. And I think together we will be making an attempt into demystifying the ever-expanding field of uh, air and space law throughout the course of the two-day event. And before we move ahead and proceed to the inaugural speeches, I would like to uh, start on a very blessed note. So I think uh, I would request all the members of our dais to please proceed towards uh, the kindling of the lamp. Thank you. In light of this momentous occasion, we would now like to request Professor Dr. Dilip Ukesar, our Vice Chancellor, to present Honorable Sri Justice Ujjal Bhuyan with a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, it would again be our pleasure to invite uh, Dr. Dilipuke, uh, sir, to present a token of appreciation to Dr. Uh, S. Sanjeev Kumar, sir, for uh, the token of appreciation for the Vice Chancellor of GNLU.
I would now like to call upon Professor Dr. Dilip Uke, sir, our Vice Chancellor, to present the token of appreciation to Professor Sandeepa Bhatt. Thank you, sir. It is now with utmost pleasure that I'd like to introduce Assistant Professor Ditya Varyat, the coordinator for CRASL MNLU Mumbai, to give the welcome address. Sir has been our mentor for the last two years of the Center for Research in Air and Space Law at MNLU Mumbai, as well as the visionary behind the inception of this event. And it is my privilege to invite him to the podium today. Thank you, sir. Your Lordship, Sri Justice Ujjan Bhuyalji, Professor Dr. Dilip Uke, sir, Professor <coughs> Shantukumar, sir, Professor Sandeepa Bhatt, sir, my fellow panelists, friends, and my dear fellow academics. I take great pleasure in welcoming all of you to the International Symposium on Aviation Law and Practice, hosted by Center for Research in Air and Space Law at MNLA Mumbai in association with NUJ Center for Aviation and Space Laws and Professor V.S. Mani Center for Air and Space Law at GNLU. As I look around this room, I see that I can see the who's who's of aviation and space law in India. And I, I take great privilege and I, it's my humble opportunity to actually invite and welcome all of you to this two-day journey that we are going to jointly host. As many of you would know that Center for Research in Air and Space Law was established in 2021. So 2021, 2022 were, were COVID years. And when the center was established, it was because of the vision of Professor Dr. Dilip Uke. And it was actually an outcome of a conversation that he had with Professor Kastur Rangan sir, who is a former ISRO chairman, and Justice Bobde sir, who is the former Chief Justice of India. And we set up the Center for Research in Air and Space Law in 2021, and we were entering into the stage of everything going online. So over the past two years, we have been constantly doing a lot of activities, but from the virtual mode. And we were looking for an opportunity to actually do something in our campus, but we were waiting for the right moment. And I couldn't find a better moment than this when we have two other big NLUs who are collaborating with us in this journey. Over the last two years, you will see that air and space law as a field was very new for MNLU. We had no idea that where we would go. And we were actually looking for help to guide us and mentor us in this journey. And in this journey of finding a mentor, I found Professor Sandeepa Bhatt, sir. Along with Sandeepa Bhatt, sir, and the vision that Professor Dilip Uke, sir, had, we hosted many programs offline, in the online mode. We were hosting conferences, we, we, we called for papers, we tried to do with something with blog, we tried to do with research. And you will see that Center for Aviation and Space Laws at NUJS, they have actually cared for us like a father. They have took care of us like a mother. They have actually built us. And, we will, and you will see that almost all the activities that we do, it is because of the generous help that NUJS has given, given to us. And we were actually looking for more partners and then we found an, another gem of a person, Professor Shantukumar sir, who said that we are also re ready to collaborate in making this event a larger success. Now, this collaboration in itself is a celebration. You will never see law schools coming together and doing a conference on a niche field like aviation and space laws. And you will see that this conference has multiple purpose. We are here to deliberate upon a lot of issues. We are looking forward to some publication after the conference. And one of the main purpose of this inaugural session is to introduce this book called as a handbook on aviation law, international aviation law published by Thomson Reuters. You will see that the field of aviation is like the intricate web of flights on our global skies. It is complex, it is interconnected, 
and it is constantly evolving. I will take one minute to just tell you what was the journey behind this book. I'll just set the context because you will see Professor Sandeep Babat sir and UK sir and Shantanu sir talking about the book. So the very idea of the book came when we started the center and I had a discussion with Professor UK sir in his cubicle saying that we need to do something to develop scholarship in aviation law and I think we have the position and resources to do it. He said that we should look for more collaborators who can guide us in this journey. At that time I was reading about air and space law and I was reading about this whole spectrum from the writings of Professor Sandeep Babat sir. So I asked Professor Okay sir that can I request Sandeep Babat sir to join this project and I was expecting that at max he will say no. I sent him a mail and it took a, it took him only 14 hours to respond with a yes. and him joining the project has completely changed the project you will see that this book that we will be launching today has collaborators from istanbul we have collaborators from cologne we have collaborators from montreal we have collaborators from bangalore delhi kolkata making it making this work a truly transnational scholarship and this would have been possible without the support that professor uk sir and professor sandeep babat sir had rendered on to us so with this i welcome all of you to this conference with this i also welcome all of you in this journey of exploring aviation and space law thank you so much sir after that inspiring speech i think this is the best time for us to announce the release of the handbook on international aviation law i would like to present the book to our dais professor sandeepa bhat our vice chancellor sir our honorable chief guest as well as assistant professor aditya varyat sir yes sir we would like to announce the release of the interna- of the handbook on international aviation law as already mentioned by khushi and i think uh, more than emphasized by aditya varyat sir uh, professor dr sandeepa bhat sir has not only been instrumental as a guiding light but he has always played a pivotal role starting from the very inception of our center center for research in air and space law and i think it would be just too less to limit calling himself and calling sir a stalwart when we talk about deliberations on air and space law in india and i take the honor of inviting sir to uh, address the gathering here uh thank you so much honorable justice uh, ujjal moyan uh, the two vice chancellors of the reputed uh, national law universities uh, distinguished uh, colleagues and uh, my dear friends a very good morning to all of you uh when all of them were uh, telling about actually me being the brain behind this particular uh, the event uh, i had a pleasure but at that same point in time i was also a little bit humiliated because uh, the credit should go to both prasa uk and uh, aditya because uh, see you are having the finances and then implementing that at the ground level is a different ball game when compared to that of actually having an idea and helping out with the idea so i should really credit both of them for this uh, wonderful achievement now in terms of uh, so called air and space law even actually honorable justice was just before discussing with me uh, let me just actually try to tell something i uh, encountered with the air and space law for the first time in uh, 2002 when i was in my final year of llm of course final year of llm because it used to be two years at that time not uh, one year llm so we had a course on air and space law 
soon after that, I had some kind of a fascination, maybe because of my science background. So plus two, I have done it in the science. So therefore, uh, maybe because of that, I thought that if I'm uh, having a long-standing career, I will try to do it in the aviation and space law. But no one to guide, of course, 2002. I wanted to actually do my dissertation on uh, aviation law, or sorry, space law to be very precise. My friends told me that actually you can think it of after life, uh, going up, the soul going up, not actually uh, before that, because it would not help you in any manner to develop your career. At that time it was IPR. It was all IPR, IPR, IPR. So everyone was doing their dissertation in IPR. And I was also forced to do an IPR, to be very precise. I did my dissertation in IPR. In the course of actually the studying uh, that subject air and space law, the first thing which I understood was that there is nothing called air and space law. There is nothing called air and space law. Let me repeat it. It's a myth that there is a subject called air and space law. There is only aviation law and space law. Or aviation law, you can say it as air law, whatever it may be. Both of them are completely distinct. The first thing which I have understood in this is that the air and space law is a misnomer. And even my center's name, I have mentioned it as Center for Aviation and Space Laws. Right? So it is laws, the plural, since actually uh, it is not the single domain. More significantly, studying aviation law and space law together is also a disaster. I tell my students, I think, I think my first batch student is also here in the NUJS. First batch student, uh, Kiran was actually my first batch student, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, back in 2007, <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, why I'm saying that actually studying them together is not advisable? To be very precise, aviation law and space law has got no interconnection whatsoever except the fact that outer space is just next to the airspace. They're not even complementary to each other, they're contradictory to each other. Because the airspace is governed by the principle of sovereignty, state has got the sovereign rights over the airspace. Outer space is governed by the principle of freedom, which are contradictory in nature. And precisely because of that reason, even the principles or the different concepts which are applicable in aviation law and space law are contradictory to each other. Look into the process of licensing, look into the process of registration, look into the process of liability or maybe the fixation of liability. Aviation and space are completely distinct. If I were to tell you simply about liability, in aviation law, we fix the liability primarily on the private players. It should be either the carriers who are liable or it might also be actually the, uh, the operators in certain circumstances. They would be liable to pay compensation. Space law speaks only about the liability of the launching state or launching states. It's a state liability and even responsibility also. Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty categorically says that even for the private space activities, the state is responsible. It's a direct responsibility attributed on the state. So that's why conceptually and fundamentally aviation law and space law are completely distinct. There is no correlation. Right? I always used to tell in my class that studying aviation law and space law together is nothing but studying tort law along with, uh, tort law along with the criminal law. Tort law along with criminal law, not even tort law with the Consumer Protection Act. Of course, they may have go hand in hand. But you know the concepts, how they are different in civil law and the criminal law. So I believe that actually it is studying them together, which would uh, make no sense. Right, so then 2003, I enrolled for PhD. I did it, I mean, I got the courage to actually enroll for space law at that particular point in time. Though there was nothing available, though there was actually no, uh, no one to mentor me, right? So despite that, actually, I thought of actually venturing into the, the space law. Uh, I also joined academia, uh, academics uh, during the same uh, the year, uh, but it took four years for me to uh, get, a, get an opportunity to offer the space law as a course. And I should credit NUJS for that because uh, I joined NUJS in 2007. So uh, NUJS gave me an opportunity to actually develop an independent course. Since there are elective papers which are there in the NUJS, many elective papers, I got an opportunity. I should thank NUJS. I'm always grateful to NUJS for this reason since I could able to actually develop my own uh, field therein. I think uh, Kiran's was the first badge wherein I experimented uh, space law, and that also happens to be the first course, independent course on space law in India. That's what actually has been informed to me, because until that point in time, it used to be only aviation and space law together. That you, there was no independent course on the, the space law offered for the whole semester. Uh, 2008, 
I started the international aviation law. The very next year, I offered the international aviation law. When I was searching for the books, I found only one. Of course, when I was doing my LLM, there was not even a single book. We had only seniors notes and some kind of actually articles randomly, which they have photocopied from somewhere, which were actually handed over to us. Apart from that, there was nothing. When I started teaching, I saw that there was one fundamental book, Diedrich Warshur, IHPH Diedrich Warshur. You must also be actually having access to it uh, right now, but not covering all aspects. Because international aviation law has got public uh, aviation law, private aviation law, and the penal aviation law. You can say it PPP, right? Three parts of that, actually. Public aviation law, to a certain extent, was discussed, but still not the uh, Chicago Convention annexes and all. They were not discussed in the Dietrich for sure. Private aviation law, of course, Warsaw Convention, Montreal Convention, to a certain extent, were discussed. Rome and others were actually just a, given a skeletal of that. And even uh, financing aspect was never mentioned therein. There was no discussion about that. So, uh, aviation financing, one of the most significant aspects at present, was never discussed. Penal loss, very briefly. That's how actually one book was there. Remaining all were used to be voluminous books on each very, very small area. Like, uh, say, um, Lawrence Goldrest uh, is there with respect to the Warsaw Convention, which is of more than 800 uh, pages. So, uh, a very voluminous book on that. Similarly, on the Chicago Convention, you have got actually multiple books by Abhayaratne on different aspects of the Chicago Convention, right? So, like that, uh, there are different books on different aspects of aviation law, but the problem is that it is too much collectively. If I tell my students to actually study in one semester all those books, they will become mad, right? So they will not actually offer my subject definitely. So this was a kind of a situation. Uh, at that time itself, I was thinking that should be some kind of uh, an exercise in terms of having entire aviation law in a nutshell. Right? Not like in a, say, bulky manner, which would not be conducive for the students, or it's not student-friendly, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, uh, time did not permit me, because I was more into space law, so I was writing uh, uh, much in uh, the space law. Aviation law, had that I had it in mind that that should be something which should be nutshell, uh, student-friendly, so on and so forth. Finally, uh, that was realized when Aditya contacted me. He contacted me for a handbook on air and space law, Right, the same, I remember actually, air in space law. I explained to him the same logic which I told you just before. Uh, then I said that we will have two separate handbooks, one on aviation law, one on space law. Uh, aviation law has been realized and currently, actually today, today we have released it. Space law is in the pipeline and I'm glad to say that in the very next year, I mean 2024, we are actually publishing the space law and it's going to be published by the OUP, Oxford University Press. So we have a privilege of actually having it published by the Oxford University Press. Right. So hopefully, we will have a similar kind of a, the, the event to uh, also actually launch the, uh, the space law book in the near future. Now, as far as the contents is uh, concerned, Aditya has already told that we have actually the scholars across the globe uh, contributing to this. And this is also with the specific reason, because we wanted to have the different kind of inputs uh, there in, in the, uh, the book. It should not be one-sided, actually, the approach to the international aviation law. So we tried to actually culminate all different kind of the inputs into one book. So different chapters, you can find that in a different way uh, um, contributed by the different the authors. The rest of the things, you can go through the book and then you can understand uh, how valuable it, it would be. And the last thing which I'd like to say is that uh, these two days, one on aviation law, one on space law, the two events which we are having, again, I have asked him to actually keep it separate. This is because both of them are having so much of development that one cannot imagine. There is a lot of scope for actually practice in both aviation as well as the space law, right? So don't be under the impression that actually they are, these, are, these are still actually niche areas. No, absolutely not. So they have developed tremendously. Only those who are practicing currently would be able to actually highlight on how much significance is there in terms of aviation and space law, the practice, right? So I will actually, I will not take much more time on that. And then the next, the two, today and tomorrow, actually, probably you will be able to actually understand about what are the emerging areas wherein there are scope for practice in aviation and space law. So I will actually uh, keep it open for those discussions rather than actually uh, taking more time to tell about the scope of aviation and space law. Thank you so much. I hope that actually you will all enjoy the, the two days. Uh, thank you so much once again. Thank you, Professor Sandeepa Bhatsa. 
We would now like to welcome Professor Dr. S. Shantakumar sir to the podium to deliver the keynote address. Sir has been the bridge between MNLU Mumbai and GNLU in our once dream and now endeavor to conduct this event. I'd like to invite you to the podium, sir. Distinguished Chief Guest for this inaugural session of the International Symposium on Aviation Law and Practice, Honorable Mr. Justice Ujjal Bihan, Judge Supreme Court of India. A true friend, philosopher and guide, Professor Dilip Uke, Vice Chancellor, MNLU. A very good friend, Professor Sandeepa Bhatt. All the distinguished invitees, participants in this uh, International Symposium on Aviation Law and Practice. The, <coughs> uh, the host and the brain behind this program, Aditya. So on behalf of uh, Gujarat National Law University and especially on behalf of uh, Professor V.S. Mani, Center for Air and Space Law at Gujarat National Law University, uh, <clears throat> it's my privilege and pleasure to be a part of this uh, wonderful initiative. As Aditya mentioned, I think this is the first time that uh, three NLUs are coming together and uh, this is a good beginning. And I think uh, this collaboration should increase and uh, we should uh, mutually share our expertise in these areas of uh, development and uh, try and uh, help the younger generation to be benefited by the expertise that is available across law schools. So I must thank uh, Professor Sandeepa Bhatt for uh, guiding all these space law centers in all the universities, not only in MNLU, at JNLU, uh, at other uh, universities as well. He has been very kind in uh, helping. <clears throat> this aviation sector, uh, as pointed out by both the speakers earlier, is developing at a very rapid pace. It's extremely, especially the sector in India is developing extremely, uh, even, uh, you know, faster than the global average. The KPMG report says that uh, there will be a steep rise of uh, annual increase of 18% every year. And with this development of what is happening in the aviation sector, now flying has become a common man's thing. It's no more, I think, when... Uh, Deccan Airlines came with the tagline, now everyone can fly. I think that is Deccan Airlines or Air Asia, I think. Air, Asia. Air Deccan, sorry, Air Deccan. <laughs> Air Deccan, uh, the, when they said that uh, now everyone can fly. <clears throat> so now the sector is booming up and uh, now we have been reading news about the number of aircrafts ordered by Indigo and Air India, the largest such orders no other airline companies have given to both Boeing as well as Airbus. So with all these things happening, I, we, we see as academics, we see that there is a huge employment potential for our stu students in this particular sector. And since aviation law or space law is not a core course offered as per the recommendations of the Bar Council of India, so there are universities uh, which are gearing up to prepare their students in uh, creating interest in this subject and uh, trying to equip them with the necessary knowledge skills uh, on these uh, new branches of law. And that is where uh, these centers have emerged and then they try and propagate the idea of this uh, particular branch of law, which has uh, rightly said by uh, Professor Sandeepa Bhatt that in uh, 15 years back, 20 years back, there was no one to talk about space law. But today, when we have, uh, at GNLU, we have an annual event called the GASLA, the GNLU Academy on Air and Space Law. Now we have, few years back, we were facing the challenges of inviting resource people. But today, that's not the thing. We have now developed expertise in this country who are uh, very well trained in this particular branch of law. And I'm happy that uh, uh, these kind of academic initiatives helps uh, foster that uh, spirit and uh, uh, the, the curiosity in knowing new things about this particular branch of law. 
lot of things are happening, as I said, in the aviation sector. For example, eight years back, nine years back, in 2014, MH370 disappeared. And even for making a documentary, Netflix took nine years to release a documentary to find out the truth behind the di disappearance. It's, it's a, I, I, I do not know, like, we say that uh, technology has advanced and a lot of things are happening, but uh, we do not know where that uh, flight disappeared. There is no evidence. There is no theory to say this is what has happened to MS370. Even if you have looked at the Netflix documentary, there are three theories. In three episodes, they have shown three different theories of uh, disappearance, but then there is no conclusive proof of what happened to MH370. So on one side, we are trying to create unmanned aircrafts. On the other side, we don't have even technology or uh, necessary competency to identify an aircraft which suddenly disappeared in the air. At a particular point of time, after that, it lost connect with the ATC at Kuala Lumpur. After that, we do not know what happened to that flight with the 239 uh, uh, human beings living, uh, traveling along with the crew members. So this is still, I, I just want to say that uh, still this sector is developing and uh, we do not have concrete uh, solutions for many problems because law is a tool to solve many of the problems. That is how we have been using law for to solve most of our complex problems. But now in the aviation sector, if you see the one case I'm just telling, 370, we, we don't know what happened. Till date, no proof. Uh, Malaysia had abandoned their search exercise. And uh, look at uh, the notorious uh, shooting down of aircrafts by Russia. I think no other country has that uh, record history of shooting down civil aircrafts. So they have done it with Korean aircraft. They have done with again MH17. Again, a Malaysian aircraft, which was shot down. What are the consequences? Last week, many of you, if you have been following uh, aviation news in the news newspapers, last week, almost 20 aircrafts flying over Iran got lost. 20 aircrafts, not one, two. This is a very scary thing, very scary thing because, okay, 370 is now a history, but this happened last week. Just see that information. It appears very scary. And two of the Indian airlines were also affected by that. Indigo and Air India got affected by this, what they call it as GPF, GPS spamming or spoofing. Both have happened. I think Indigo airline pilot was trying to reach out to all the nearby ATCs to understand where is he flying and what is the time. This is the conversation that we could ha have right now. He was clueless as to where he is flying and what is the time that he is flying, in what is the time zone. You can imagine the how scary it is when you do not know where are you and what time is it. It happened just last week. And still, you know, we do not know who has done it. Still, we do not have, nobody had claimed uh, anything over this particular incident. And uh, I saw that yesterday, DGCA had formed in India a, a committee to see that those kind of things doesn't happen in India. Because GPS uh, spoofing and spamming, it happens. So a lot of the things, you know, the, the way technology improves, uh, Technological advancements are improving. It's not happening with the laws. I think we are still stuck with the Aircraft Act of 1934. We have been trying a lot. We have been trying a lot to come out with a new Aircraft Act. Like if, all, if some of you are interested, if you have looked at the new, the Aircraft Bill 2023, 20, uh, you'll see that just except for change of name in the year, I don't see any substantial change in the law. 
I do not know the reason why this is happening. Why can't uh, we come out with a brand new legislation? This is again another important challenge that uh, whether our laws are uh, matching to the changes, uh, what is happening in the sector. Another important thing is uh, the recent episode which happened with GoAir and the NCLT orders. Now the aviation uh, leasing companies have raised a red flag against India. The way the courts dealt with the courts in India, especially NCLT, the Delhi High Court, the way they dealt with uh, the GoAir uh, matter. Now no leasing company is interested in leasing out their aircraft to India just because of our IBC. And I am extremely happy that at least now government realized the mistake what has happened. And on October 4th, which means three days before, today we are 7th, October 4th, the Ministry of uh, Commerce had issued a Gazette notification exempting aircrafts from uh, Section 14 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. So these are some examples that I am telling that aviation is not something which is alien to us now anymore. Aviation sector is what we, we get to know every day, something or the other is happening uh, around us, uh, at the government level, at the uh, courts, and at the airlines, and people are facing a lot of issues, the especially, you, you just see internet, you know, check for go-air go uh, uh, insolvency proceedings. Millions of passengers are affected by that, who have booked tickets, they can't get their money back. Should it be treated just like a consumer issue? How it should be dealt with? You know, who will own up the responsibility of uh, paying back all these uh, people? So, a lot of issues are coming up. I, I just wanted to highlight some of the important issues, what's happening around us during this particular point of time. Just to again create interest in this particular branch of law, we need more and more young lawyers to take up this as a career option. And at this particular point of time, uh, I must appreciate Professor Sandeep Babbad, Professor Dilip Uke and uh, Aditya for coming out with this beautiful book. I had the opportunity of going through the articles. I wish all of you will get a copy of it and then it's a wonderful book. As uh, Sandeep Babbad was trying to say that it's a very, very simple book, but then uh, it, it covers everything. Because generally I have seen aviation books not talking about Cape Town Convention, but I could see one chapter on Cape Town Convention in this. That is the beauty of this book. It's an amazing book. It's an amazing uh, compilation of articles written by uh, experts. And I'm very happy to note that one of our alumni, Vikrant Pachananda, has also contributed an article in this book. And I wish that this book will be a, a, a reading material, prescribed reading material for all students across law schools, whoever will be studying air law. With, all, with these few words, I once again thank Professor Dilip Uke for uh, uh, including GNLU into your ambit because it was a very casual conversation we had at a restaurant in Kolkata, right, over breakfast. <laughs> I heard these two gentlemen talking about a conference and I said, what is this? They said, air and kind of conference. I said that, how can you do it without us? We also have an air and space law. Then at the breakfast table, over a cup of coffee, we agreed that the three of us will jointly organize this event and we are here today. And I must thank uh, Professor Dilip Uke, Professor Sandeep Abbott and uh, Mr. Aditya and uh, my, uh, uh, my faculty colleague uh, at GNLU who is heading the BS Money Center for Air and Space Lab, Professor Divya Tyagi and all the other distinguished participants here. Wish you all the best, have a great uh, deliberations and I hope uh, you all will enjoy the proceedings of this conference. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, again, picking up from where Dr. Shantakumar, sir, and uh, Dr. Uh, Sandeepa Bhatt, sir, left, uh, they created the distinction of having just pitched an idea probably over breakfast or a cup of coffee and then actually making it a reality of having all the stalwarts of the field present here with us today. And that would not have been possible for, but without uh, Dr. Dilipuke, sir's commitment. 
and the institutional support that he brings with it, that an idea which was probably pitched within the center um, a lot of months back uh, has been realized into reality today. So I would like to invite Sir to the dais for the presidential address. Chief guest of today's inaugural function, Honorable Chief Justice uh, Ujjal Bhuyan, sir. Madam Bhuyan, my friend and colleague, uh, a true friend and colleague, Professor S. Shantakumar, sir, Vice Chancellor uh, JNLU, Gandhi Nagar. The backbone of this project and uh, guide of uh, our center, Professor Sandipa Bhatt, Mr. Aditya, all uh, resource persons, including Dr. Jessica from Indonesia and other resource persons, participants, and dear student friends and colleagues. A very happy and good morning to all of you. Indeed, uh, it's a great pleasure here today for this inaugural program of uh, rather two days, uh, two different uh, programs. Today it is International Symposium on Aviation Law and Practice and tomorrow as it was pointed out about space policy, the workshop on space policy, which is collectively organized by the three different centers. One is Air and Space Law Center of Emanuel Mumbai. Then, VS Money Center of GNLU and Aviation and Space Law Center in UGS, Kolkata. As uh, just a few minutes before, uh, we also released the book. We used this platform, this occasion, to release this book, a handbook on international aviation law, edited by Professor Sandeep, Sandeep Abhat, Aditya, and myself which has been published by Thomson Reuters. I am really honored and excited to stand before you today to present this book to all. Professor Bert as well as uh, Professor Shantakumar sir have pointed out the need and relevance and moreover its utility of this particular book, which has been culmination of the countless uh, research, hours of research carried out by the researchers as well as their dedication and moreover it is the collaboration collaboration of three different nlus who have same aim same goal and same agenda aditya has pointed out that how come the center of air and space law in emanuel mumbai was established rather it was just a sheer coincidence that i happened to be at the residence of our former chancellor and former cgi Honorable Justice uh, Bobade, sir. And you won't believe that uh, that interaction went on for more than two hours, almost two and a half hours or so. Wherein we have discussed several issues, including even the issues about the urbanization, issue about the traffic, issues about the high seas, and then even air and space. At that juncture itself, he gave a call to Dr. Kasturi Rangan, sir. All of us know well who is he, a former ISRO chairman, former member of parliament, chairperson of NEP. And then he made me to talk to Dr. Kasturi Rangan over the phone. Not only that, uh, we have decided that uh, we shall meet him, I shall meet him at his office, and then also visit ISRO. Dear friends, uh, I must share with you that uh, just within a month or less than a month thereafter, I visited Dr. Kasur Rangan sir's office. Half a day discussion took place there and thereafter went to ISRO office, had a discussion with the then chairman of ISRO, Dr. K. Sivan, when Chandrayaan 2 was going on, the discussion about the Chandrayaan 2 and planning of Chandrayaan 2 was going on. And then, ultimately, this Air and Space Law Center here in 
came to be established. Dear friends, uh, international aviation law, as, uh, as it has been pointed out, is really particularly uh, international aviation law is a complex as well as a dynamic field that governs every aspect of aviation from the rights and responsibilities of states and airlines to the safety and security of passengers and cargo. It touches upon issues such as air traffic management, aviation environmental concerns, airline liability and much more. This book serves as a comprehensive guide to understand these multifaceted aspects of international aviation law. In the process of editing this book, I had the privilege of collaborating with some of the highest and brightest legal minds in the field. Together, we have endeavored to provide readers with a comprehensive and up-to-date resource that delves into the complexities of international aviation law. This book addresses recent developments, emerging trends, and the ever-evolving regulatory landscapes. But the question might come that, why this book so much matter? This question might come into everybody's mind. Firstly, reason is that it serves as a valuable resource for legal scholars, practitioners, and students interested in international aviation law. It provides them with a one-stop reference that covers a wide range of topics from the Chicago Convention to Montreal Convention and everything in between. Furthermore, the book contributes to the ongoing discussions surrounding aviation safety, environmental sustainability, and the protection of passengers' rights. In an era where aviation faces unprecedented challenges, including climate change and the aftermath of global pandemic, understanding the legal framework that underpins this industry is more critical than ever before. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have supported and contributed to this endeavor. I hope that this book will serve as a source of knowledge, inspiration, and a catalyst for meaningful discussions in the realm of international aviation law. As Professor Sandeep Abad has already pointed out that, the third one is coming up. Third one, why I'm saying that a few months before, just the last but one month, we came out with another book on international handbook on environmental law. That's why in that sense, third one. Third one, third book, that too with Oxford University Press on space law will come up. I'm hopeful that this aviation law book as well as the forthcoming book on space law will serve a uh, guide in true sense to all the researchers, practitioners, as well as whole academia. With this, I thank all of you and wish you all the good luck, best luck for two days deliberations on two different topics which are more required in today's present circumstances. Thank you so much. I would like to thank our Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Dr. Dilip Puke, for that extremely heartfelt um, address. It is now with great pleasure that I come to the much awaited segment of this inaugural session. I would like to first thank Honorable Sri Justice Ujjal Bhuyan for being present here today. Sir, it is an honor. I would humbly like to request you to come to the podium to deliver the much awaited Chief Guest's address.
प्रोफेसर दिलीप उके प्रोफेसर शांता कुमार प्रोफेसर संदीपा भट्ट मिस्टर आदित्य आई होप ही यू हैड अ गुड नाइट स्लीप यू कुड स्लीप समटाइम ही वाज देयर लेट आई थिंक यू वेयर देयर इन द होटल लॉबी वी केम अ बिट लेट डिस्टिंग्विस्ट पार्टिसिपेंट्स and my student friends at the outset i must thank professor uke for inviting me uh, here to be a part of this uh, international symposium for it has given me an opportunity to come back to this city i was a judge here for uh, in the bombay high court for 2 years and i had left this place uh, in october 2021 so a lot of fond memories here but uh, the benefit of being a supreme court judge or uh, as a high court chief justice is that you get to participate and address uh, symposiums like this in the supreme court collegium uh, recommendatory note the collegium uh, referred to my expertise on taxation law so from uh, of course nowadays familiarity is often passed off as uh, expertise from social justice to taxation i am here uh, discussing uh, or in a symposium of space law so this is the advantage of uh, being a supreme court judge uh, that you get to attend uh, this type of symposium thank you very much for inviting me here i've got a written text but when i went through the text i found that it is basically confined to aviation law in my brief interaction with our professors space law is not uh, aviation law something beyond aviation law. so i will not therefore confine to my prepared speech and try to say something uh, beyond that friends at the outset i must congratulate the three editors of this wonderful book i got a copy of this book before it's uh, it was uh, it's uh, formally released today i have gone through it and i must congratulate all the authors for their painstaking effort and the deep research they have carried out in uh, uh, publishing this handbook they have termed this as a handbook but i'm sure this in due course of time this will be the book when we uh, study or proceed Uh, to deal with aviation law we are all evolving law is evolving we are all evolving when i was a lawyer or when i was a judge i hardly come I came across any matter relating to space law so aircraft act as uh, uh, shanta kumar has said yes of course but nothing to do with uh, space law as such so therefore uh, as we say we are all evolving we are no longer what we were say 5 years back or 10 years back as a students of law or as a, uh, in the judiciary see uh, when we speak of aviation law fundamental we all have to remember that we are all students of law and having an abiding faith in our constitution when we speak about space law naturally space law there is interplay between law and science there cannot be a study of space law dehors a belief in reasoning and science therefore it is essential that we go back to article 51a of the constitution and reaffirm our commitment to reasoning and scientific thought process it is one of the fundamental duties of every citizen of india to believe in science and technology and to believe in reasoning and to clear our minds thought process thinking from superstitious beliefs we can't discuss space law we can't discuss science technology or going to the space and discuss space law if we are if our mindset is of uh, is, uh, has cobwebs of superstitious beliefs religion is something different superstition is something different so as students uh, please uh, 
keep this in mind as students of law all we all of us uh, need to keep this in mind that we can't study space law we can't study uh, interplay of space and space law if we are steeped in archive uh, 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 this uh, thought processes we need to come out of those therefore in fact i can say uh, all of us need to recalibrate our thought process recently i had uh, uh, visited one university and i spoke to them about equality as understood by professor uh, dr baba saheb himrao ambedkar substantive equality formal equality substantive equality these are very very essential we need to go back and relook what baba saheb ambedkar said in 1936 government of maharashtra has published his uh, works uh, speeches and writings of uh, dr ambedkar in the form of a book including his speech which he could not deliver uh, in lahore in 1936 which he titled as annihilation of caste as students we need to understand critically examine these issues these are very very essential as we move on to science uh, into more space and study space law let us not take our all these inequalities into space and uh, uh, a uh, create another social order there completely disparate social order there it is a great uh, it's a it's a very good thing that three of the uh, nlus have collaborated uh, to have this symposium this collaboration we can also expect amongst the uh, the countries of the world when we uh, deal with space law or space programs in fact the 1967 uh, treaty Uh, treaty on principles governing activities of states in exploration and use of outer space including the moon and the celestial bodies 1967 it says that uh, no nation can own the space no nation can own the moon or any other special uh, celestial bodies if that be so space or the celestial bodies offers us a great opportunity for collateral uh, exchange of ideas college uh, collateralism with not only between nations but amongst uh, the academy academia amongst the scientific fraternity and study of science study of space study of space law must be for the benefit of humanity not to perpetuate uh, the inequalities which we see uh, in the country which is unfortunately the fault lines are more pronounced than what was uh, what was there earlier when we were still in the law schools so friends uh, uh, i must uh, congratulate the mnlu uh, mumbai for organizing the, the seminar it has got various as a uh, professor bhatt has pointed out space law is not aviation law it is beyond that there are various facets governing space law and we need to understand that for a common student of law in fact we were discussing this in the vice uh, in the office of the vice chancellor why should a student study space law that also is an aspect which needs to be deliberated upon not only curiosity we okay curiosity is one thing but there may be there should be the practical uh, pragmatic uh, outcome of a student opting for a course in space law what are the career prospects i can see in the policy domain there can be there are possibilities of uh, students venturing into the policy domain there in the uh, uh, academia certainly there can be otherwise what many people may say uh, yesterday we had a discussion oh what space law do you mean that lawyers will uh, land up in space and start litigation in space so let us not go have this uh, nightmarish uh, possibilities so therefore what i say what i mean is that uh, a student of law when he or she opts for a course in space law she must have or he must have 
uh, the options available to a student. That what do I gain or what other than my uh, enlightening uh, myself or, uh, or out of curiosity, what do I gain by studying space law? So therefore, this is also one of the aspects. The space has thrown up so many challenges uh, for the different nation states. Countries are uh, uh, launching satellites after satellites. This can lead to breach of national security of uh, various countries. It can lead to breach of privacy of individuals, of communities. So many angles are there, so many facets are there. This also needs to be looked at. Since this is an evolving subject, uh, these are areas which needs to be flagged off. As I uh, said, let us not carry uh, the conflicts that we see on the earth between nation states. Uh, the other day, the uh, uh, professor said, the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, it is unending. When will it end? We are asking ourselves, when will it end? Within the country, we see conflicts in certain parts of our country. It is unending. It is not ending anywhere. Uh, to the dismay of uh, all people, when will it end? Let us not carry all these uh, preconceived notions and uh, our conflicts and uh, inequalities into the space. Uh, I'm sure uh, this uh, conference uh, will throw up very many good ideas, constructive ideas, not only ideas, very many questions for future deliberations. And uh, the two-day conference today, I think we will discuss about the aviation law and aviation policy. Tomorrow we are discussing about the new aviation uh, space uh, uh, policy we have, 2023. 2017, we had a bill. Uh, somehow the bill uh, lapsed. Now we are uh, uh, allowing private participation in, uh, into space law. Uh, it definitely will lead to a lot of commercial activities, private activities. So when there is commercial activities, certainly contracts and other things will come in. The scope of lawyering will also come in. So these are the aspects uh, the seminar will certainly discuss and pose questions for future deliberation as well. So with these few words, I thank you, uh, the, uh, each one of you, for inviting me here to be part of this symp uh, symposium. And I hope and I'm sure that the seminar will fulfill the objective for which it is, it is being organized. Thank you very much. Your Lordship, you mentioned the importance of logic and reasoning in every discipline that you perform. And I myself, being a science student, I couldn't agree more. Your Lordship, your passion for social justice has truly shined through. And I'd like to thank you for that. On this note, I'd like to invite Assistant Professor Aman Khare to deliver the, the vote of thanks. Honorable Justice Sri Ujwal Bhuvan <coughs> Ji, Judge Supreme Court of India, Madam Bhuvan, Professor Dr. Dilip Pooke, sir, Professor Dr. Shanta Kumar, sir, Professor Sandeep Bhatt, sir, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, faculty, students, <coughs> participants, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure that I have been asked to deliver the vote of thanks <coughs> in today's program. I would like to uh, Begin by thanking uh, Honorable Justice Ujwal Bhuvan, sir, for guiding us with the words of wisdom, for telling us to use our logic and be reason, <coughs> have the reasoning. I, will, I would also like to thank Professor Dilip Uke, sir, for introducing the book to everyone. Professor Shanta Kumar, sir, Director of Gujarat National University, for making us aware of the current shortcomings and the challenges that the aviation industry faces. Professor Sandeep, Sandeep Bhatt, sir, for setting the ground for the discourse that is going to be there between the aviation laws and telling us the difference between aviation laws and the space laws. I would, I would also like to thank Professor uh, Aditya Varyat for the conference, for the idea behind the conference. 
Uh, I would like to thank our media partners, EBC and SEC Online, for their support. Special thanks to the admin department and <coughs> to all those, uh, to everyone who supported us. Special thanks to Prakrit and uh, Khushi and all those students who have been supporting us for conducting this conference. Uh, I hope that this conference and uh, is going to be a good one and will, uh, leaves us with good uh, feedbacks to, of good things to uh, take us with us, back with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we'll be uh, resuming after a short break of 10 minutes with the technical sessions. So I request all of you to stand for the national anthem. Jai Hind, Jai Hind. 